Hello everyone and welcome to the showdown between the Vampire Counts led by Manuel von Karstein and the Dark Elves who are going to be led by Dreadlord and if I'm not mistaken I think it is the crossbow variant. So let's jump right into this match guys and have some fun. Now for the tail of the tape for the Vampire Counts. In the front line we do have a very heavy core of Graveguard and they're not going to be the great weapon variant. So rather than going with Graveguard as my main armor piercing option because obviously the Dark Elves are a fairly armored faction. If we go ahead and take a look at some of their base troops here, in the front line they do have Blackheart Corsairs who have 80 armor, these uh, Blackheart and Nagrand in the back line also have 100 armor, so a lot of their troops in general are, you know, fairly heavily armored. Even these Harganeth have 100, their Cav right here have 90. Granted, a lot of armies are going to bring like Dread Spears and Bleak Swords and relatively low tier Dark Elf troops, which I think like usually are rocking like 30 or 40, but, but still, I think you're definitely going to need quite a bit of AP to get through the front line. Regardless, we do have the standard Graveguard in the front, and they're mainly there just to be kind of a tank. They have uh, much higher melee defense than the Great Weapon variant, so we're going to be using them as a bit of a, a kind of just frontline uh, you know, damage damage absorbing tool, whereas the uh, the Cryptors on the back are going to be doing the heavy lifting in terms of AP in conjunction with the Mortis Engine. So normally, most Vampire Counts players, from my experience, whenever I play Dark Elves, what I often run into is like Manfred on a Dragon or the Red Duke on a Dragon, and then from there, they also run the Double Terror Geist. So, you know, that's a pretty user-friendly build. You can just goon out enemy lords, you know, pretty quickly. So I feel like most Dark Elf players are going to expect that and prepare for that. As such, I decided to switch it up a little bit in the front line. You know, I have Graveguard. Instead of having Terror Geist, I have Cryptors, and I also have a Black Coach. So we're going to be mixing it up a little bit, and hopefully it works out. So again, front line, Graveguard. In the secondary line, we do have the Mortis Engine, which is a risky pick against the Dark Elves. So if Dark Elves are going to go heavy with Dark Shards and Shades and things like that, they can really melt your Mortis Engine pretty quick. But if you go very heavy into like Felbats, and you can see I have a couple here, I also have some Hounds, the Dire Pack, and the Blood Knights over here. So I have pretty good backline pressure tools, and on top of that, uh, I actually like Manfred on a Hellseed quite a bit. Uh, 105 speed, obviously he's not going to be a heavy hitter like he is on his Dragon, but he's much more mobile, uh, can you know fly over the Dark Shards and drop zombies, and definitely brings a lot to the table. So in the secondary line, we have Cryptors, a very good answer against you know just basic Dark Elf infantry. They will struggle a little bit against Blackguard of Nagarond and some of those anti-large troops. <clears throat> But, you know, if they're standing on top of the Grave Garden and are also supported by a Mortis Engine and a bit of a Death, uh, Death Star style formation, they're going to be really tough to bring down. So we do have two of those. And, you know, the big thing is going to be, can we shut down these repeater crossbows from taking out my high value targets like the Mortis Engine and the Horrors? On top of that, we do have the Mighty Black Coach on the far side. And, you know, the Black Coach is, is not bad. It does cause fear and terror. And the longer it's in combat, it obviously gets stronger. So you can cycle charge it. You can leave it in the middle just as a unit that's going to be causing, uh, you know, morale issues for your opponent. And I kind of like it as a bit of a niche pick, uh, especially if you have the dominant Cav Force. Now, if I was playing against an opponent like Bretonia, who was going to dominate me in the Cav game, and I had to play more defensively, I probably wouldn't bring the Black Coach. But considering Blood Knights and the Dire Pack and Manfred can absolutely smash Dark Elf Cav, I felt pretty safe bringing that bad boy. So that's pretty much it. Manfred does have his uh, standard kit of ability, Sort of Unholy Power, Spirit Leech, Fate of Buno, you know, and then the Invocation of Raised Dead, of course. So Manfred's definitely going to be ready to party. For my opponent... He does indeed have a Dreadlord with the crossbow, so he could potentially, if he's able to, you know, keep this guy safe, but that's what's so good about Felbats. Felbats have insanely high melee defense at 44 and, you know, high model count. So you just send Felbats after, you know, units like this, like a Dreadlord or, you know, any sort of missile unit, and they're just going to be such a nuisance. But he does have this guy who could potentially, uh, you know, snipe Manuel over there, so we're going to see how that goes. He does also have a Firecaster, so Fireball can do a ton of damage against my Mortis Engine, which is definitely a pretty solid pick, and the Flaming Sword of Ruin. Aside from that, he does have two repeater crossbows, which uh, are a little bit, obviously, more mobile than, you know, Dark Shards would be, and I, I'm a fan of these guys. I think they're pretty good, especially against, like, Terror Geist, because they can run from the Terror Geist, they can turn and shoot them when the Terror Geist go to retreat, but against, like, Hounds and Blood Knights, it's going to be a little bit trickier. Two groups of Cold One Sphere Riders for Anti-Large, trying to contest the Cav game and probably bring protection for these guys. His main line is going to be Dread Spears, Black Art Corsairs, uh, yeah, it looks like that's his entire front line. And obviously, just in case I do go Terror Geist or decide to try and Monster Mash, and even against Crypt Horrors, he does have the Black Guard, which are also a pretty solid pick. Last but not least, he was hiding a group of Harganeth Executioners here in the forest, and I also like this pick against, like, getting through the Graveguard Death Star. So, so that's pretty much it. So without further ado, guys, let's get this show on the road. So right now, just going to be advancing with my forces. My Dire Pack and my Blood Knights are going to be pushing forward, seeing if I can get a freebie on these Dark Riders. So, you know, they were going to start shooting at me, so I was like, oh, you know, Hounds are really fast, they're going to get their acceleration bonus, so I do charge in here and get a great little downhill charge, and I'm able to clip a few of them. So Dire Pack does have anti-large, and you can see we get a few free kills before we have to retreat, but then his Cold One Knights are going to be pushing in, but this is exactly what I wanted. So what's happening here is, I send the Felbats forward. So the Felbats go after the Sorceress and the Dreadlord, and also have a very good angle to just switch onto these guys if I want to. Uh, what then works is, is I can swoop these guys up and around the back and pin these Cold One Knights in and just collapse with everything. So thankfully he did take the bait a little bit 
we're going to see if we can capitalize here. So the Felbat's just swarming these aerial units, and look how annoying that is. It just pins them down. He does decide to commit to the engagement, so uh, Manfred is going to cast Fate of Buna, which is just going to melt these Cold One Knights. You can see they're getting put in a trash can so hard. My opponent also does use the Flaming Sword of Ruin, which is giving him some pretty good stats, and my Blood Knights are actually taking quite a bit of damage. With that Fate of Buna and the support of Manfred, I also summon some zombies in the back here, so you can see the zombies rising from the pits are going to be attacking these, uh, these Cold One Knights here. So they're pretty trapped, and honestly, both of these units are pretty much done for at this point. So we get the Cold One Knights. The Mighty Black Coach is now going to be pushing in now that these mobile anti-large threats have been dealt with. And you can see the Coach, just such a fearsome, fearsome foe, is going to be driving back these repeater crossbows. So in the meantime, the Black Coach, I'm going to be uh, driving it into these Black Art Corsairs up here. You can see all these anti-large spears. Also do have the Flaming Sword of Runner. They did for a moment. Are uh, going to be getting in there. So right now, the Coach just drives right through the back of those Black Art Corsairs. My opponent's formation a little bit, uh, yeah, it's a little bit all over the place. I guess some of the troops are a little delayed in coming in. These Black Art Corsairs do come in by themselves, and you can see these Crypt Horrors are just going to take them to Pound Town. So that's going to be a little bit tough, and there isn't any missile fire to really contest these Crypt Horrors and bring them down, so he's going to have to do it the good old-fashioned way with some of these uh, Black Art and Malcolm. Granted, he does have the Repeater Crossbows, and they are online, so I guess I'm a little bit wrong in that statement there, but they're probably going to go after the Mortis Engine. So they're shooting at the Mortis Engine, and at that point, seeing it's getting targeted, I am going to be pulling it up into the forest over here. In the meantime, having uh, done pretty well in the Cav game, my uh, Blood Knights and my Dire Pack are going to go down and around and try and chase these guys down. But uh, definitely a good fireball for my opponent. He's able to just snipe the Mortis Engine right there, and that does a ton of damage. But I do get into the back line a little bit. My Blood Knights are very beat up, so I can't really afford to take any engagements here. And I almost run right into those guys, but at the last second I see it and move away. And I'm telling you guys, Felbats are just such a damn good unit. I'm able to chase down that Dreadlord. You can see Manuel is also assisting, and Manuel does have Spirit Leech, so he's going to be a very strong duelist. And... You know, even aside from that, he has much better combat stats than the uh, Dreadlord, if I'm not mistaken. 60-45 compared to 66-50. I guess his weapons rank's a little bit lower. But anyways, the Blood Knights and company do get back here, and you can see the Knights of the Red Keep are going to be chasing down these uh, Dark Riders, and this is just the worst-case scenario for these uh, missile troops. Because then that's going to allow my front line to really, you know, fight with impunity here and just kind of, you know, do as it pleases. In the meantime, Manuel is going to be summoning some more zombies, if I'm not mistaken. I summon some zombies right here next to these Hargoneth Executioners, and obviously a very powerful troop. If I can waste, you know, 30, 45 seconds of their time fighting these zombies, that's a huge win. So my opponent gets another Fireball, very, very well played. He's been doing an excellent job with that Fireball all game, and he does hit my Mortis Engine, and now it's crumbling. It's pretty low on HP, and you can see the Repeater Crossbows are shooting in, and it does disintegrate and explode. So definitely very well played there. The Bounce of Power, a little bit in my favor. I think killing those uh, Cold One Knights in the beginning, in conjunction with getting into the Cookie Jar in the back line, is really helping out quite a bit. But uh, the Cryptors are fighting pretty well. They are taking a bit of damage. Unfortunately, some of the Halberds are finally getting through. And you can also see that Murderous Prowess is now propped. So he's going to get a pretty good damage fight. Granted, I still think I have a slight advantage. And you can see the Black Coach. I've basically just been leaving it in combat. And right now at this point, it does have two of its buffs. So uh, it's not at the third tier yet, but it's definitely going to get pretty spooky up in here. So we're kind of just fighting there. I probably should have been cycle charging it, taking advantage of its massive charge bonus. But for now, I figured if we get a terror route, that'd be pretty strong. Blood Knight's still hot in pursuit, just chasing down these uh, these Dark Riders. It looks like he is going to turn around and fight. And the reason he's doing that is to kind of pin my guys in place while these Halberds can get in. So the Halberds get in. Definitely going to pick a few free kills off of my Blood Knights here, but I should be turning around in just a moment. In the back, this is kind of the big deciding factor here, just the uh, kind of the, the, the final blow. We're able to catch the Dreadlord. So the Felbats are just helping me with this engagement so much. So you guys have probably experienced this. Whenever you're playing, if you have like a Felbat type unit, and let's say you're trying to take out Manfred here, but if the Felbats are attacking you, the AI of your individual single mod model units are going to be switching to the Felbats every now and then. So it's such an annoying thing to have to perpetually be just trying to click on Manfred, and sometimes you misclick. So having a group of Felbats, you know, just like the cinematic with Manfred in it, is very, very helpful for protecting him. So Manfred's able to overpower this Dreadlord with Spirit Leech and also the support of these bats. And from there, we should be able to push this guy off the battlefield. You can see he's broken very close to the edge of the map, and uh, Manuel has definitely done it. So Fireball... Oh, wow, that Fireball did a lot of damage. I haven't seen someone use it effectively in quite some time, but that Fireball getting in there and hitting uh, Manfred again, but Manfred's going to be able to finish off this Sorceress, no problem. In the meantime, the Blood Knights are still hot in pursuit, so I do get my Hounds right here and uh, have them chase down those Dark Riders with their Peter Crossbows, because I still do have a lot of Crypt Tours, and I want to make sure they're going to be safe. So the Blood Knights coming in with just a fat, juicy rear charge right into the back of those troops, who obviously were not braced. They're facing the wrong direction, and you could just see the Vampire Count's Pincer coming in, I guess just the Hammer and Anvil, whatever metaphor you guys want to use. So the Crypt Tours definitely go into town with their heavy armor piercing and damage and poison. The Black Coach, let's see how many kills. 40 kills against somewhat elite troops is not bad at all. So from there, the Vampire Count's forces are getting pretty tattered. You can see that rear charge from the Blood Knights. It's actually going to break the Black Heart Corsairs. Uh, two groups here, as well as the Dread Spears. 
granted there are some uh, terror crossing entities here with the black coach he does cost terror which is pretty cool and still these Hargoneth executioners they were much needed in this frontline engagement they could have helped chew through the grave guard who you know then would have opened up that would have then opened up the pocket for the halberds to get onto the crypt wars whereas you know the halberds for a lot of the battle were just having to fight the grave guard so Felbats and Manfred are coming back right now. We're just kind of on cleanup duty. The Hounds on the far side, the Dire Pack are going to be chasing down those repeater crossbows in the distance. And right now I'm basically just like, okay, Felbats can just chase this 46 Black Arc uh, Corsairs right here. And if just a really haggard group of Felbats can chase them off the battlefield, that is great value. You can see the Hargan F Executioners are going to come in here, but they're not going to be able to do a whole lot. I think at this point it's too little too late. I have Terror, Manfred's in pretty good shape, still has some wins in Magic, which is why he's such a powerful Lord. Honestly, if I had to say, I mean, Red Duke is very competitive for hero sniping, so I think if you're going, like, the Terror Geist route, you just want to try and goon out like, enemy characters, that's probably a better choice. But for more well-rounded builds, I really do think that Manuel von Karstein is probably one of the more competitive picks, as much as I don't like him as a character in lore, but, uh, you know, I think he's really strong. So right now you can see he's just going to be chasing down these Dread Spears and hopefully, uh, you know, getting them, uh, getting them off the battlefield, and that's going to be pretty much it. You can see that the Harganeth Executioners are taking some damage, the Blood Knights are cycle charging, and the Cryptors are now pushing forward and just cleaving these uh, Dark Elves asunder. So well played in my opponent. It was definitely a good game, and I kind of like that. I felt like his build was pretty well contoured to taking out the Terror Geists. If I had gone like double Terror Geists, for example, I wouldn't have had the Blood Knights to deal with the Cold One Knights. He would have had more impunity with the Cav and, you know, uh, rear charging my troops and maybe going after the Cryptors with these guys. And had I tried to land, you know, he had these uh, Black Rhine and Nagarant and, and really would have been tough to catch the Dark Riders with the repeater, the repeater crossbills. Granted, I still could have brought like double Terror Geist, uh, you know, gotten rid of the Mortis Engine, go double Terror Geist and double Felbat. That might have still given me the tools I needed to shut these guys down, but I definitely think that going with a little bit more of a, I don't even know if this would be like a non-meta build, but uh, yeah, most vampire players that I've been running into just use the double terror guys quite a bit. It's just such a safe build, but I definitely felt like this was pretty strong, and it was very fun using Blood Knights as well as Crypt Horrors. It felt very much like a Total War Warhammer 1 build. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for now. So very well played to my opponent, ODM Rame. Look forward to running into again on ladder, and hopefully you guys enjoyed seeing Manuel in action. Have an excellent night, guys, and take care.